For question six, it's pretty obvious that uh, this is definitely a proper fraction. So now we have to take a look at the denominator and see whether or not any of the terms can be further factorized. And indeed, this is the case for x squared minus 2x plus 1. So x squared minus 2x plus 1 can be factorized into x minus 1 whole thing squared. Therefore, I will end up with this assumption statement. So let your 6x squared minus 32x plus 1 over x plus 4 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. This can be rewritten into this form. And with this form, you'll notice that this will be your repeated linear factor case. So you have a over x plus 4, that's from here. Okay, and then the next term will be for your x minus 1. So one of the partial fractions is b over x minus 1. And then the second one, sorry, rather the third one, the third partial fraction will be c over x minus 1 whole thing squared. Okay, let's simplify this. So you get 6x squared minus 32x plus 1 equals to a times x minus 1 whole thing squared plus b times x minus 1 times x plus 4 plus c times x plus 4. So in this case, there are two unknowns of x that I can substitute in in order to get rid of uh, some of your unknowns. So the two values of x that I will substitute will be one will be x equals to one, the other one will be x equals to minus four. So when I substitute x equals to one and simplify the left-hand side, I'll end up with minus 25. So in this case, because I've substituted x equals to one, you notice that uh, this one, we have gotten rid of it. Okay, and this one is the same thing. Therefore, you're only left with your C. So it's C times one plus four becomes five. Therefore, your C equals to negative five. So the next value of X that I would have substituted will be X equals to negative four. Okay, so your left-hand side becomes 225. In this case, because I substituted X equals to negative four, you'll notice that this disappears and so will this. Therefore, I'm only left with A. So it's minus four minus one, that's minus five. Minus 5 whole thing squared becomes 25, so it becomes 25, a equals to 2 to 5, therefore your a is equals to 9. The next one will be to substitute your values of a and c that you have just found out and an appropriate value of x. Okay, so again, just to remind you all, choose a number that is easy to substitute and that will be your integer values. So when I substitute x equals 0, a equals to 9, c equals to negative 5, okay, when I simplify this, I'll get 1. Okay, and then from the other terms, I'll end up with 9 times 1 plus b times minus 1 times 4 minus 5 times 4. Okay, I simplify this whole thing. I end up with minus 4b equals to 12, and that leaves me with b equals to negative 3. Okay, and in the last step, let's put them all together. So your original fraction, which is this, has now been split into these three partial fractions. 9 over x plus 4 minus 3 over x minus 1, minus 5 over x minus 1 whole thing squared.